Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Severe risk is west of us tonight, but not so much tomorrow afternoon. We'll look at the timing of Saturday's threat coming up. We're going to begin tonight at 11 with breaking news from Detroit's east side, where a 12-year-old boy has been hit by a Detroit police squad car. The boy was crossing the street at 7 Mile and Hayes when he was struck. While responding to the scene, a different police cruiser slammed into a pole near Gratiot, putting two officers in the hospital. Dramont Terry is live on the scene tonight. Dramont, do we know how that little boy and the officers are doing tonight? Kimberly, the boy and the two officers are all recovering at the hospital. I am standing at Seven Mile in Gratiot, where that second cruiser trying to get to the scene of where the kid was hit, you can see over my shoulder, simply lost control and slammed right into this utility pole. Now, we are told that lights were on, on when this officer lost control, and you can see just how it ended up. But the cop car that hit the kid had no lights on or sirens running because they were simply on duty. It was still light out when a Detroit police cruiser patrolling on the east side became a part of an investigation. DPD says a 12-year-old boy tried crossing Hayes at 7 Mile, but as he got to the middle of the road, the signal changed, and the car in the left lane motioned for the child to continue crossing. But as the boy passed that car, the police cruiser hit the kid. Police say at a low speed. I saw the video from the scout car, uh, and, and basically the officer was traveling at below the speed limit. And as he's coming up to the intersection, the boy just pops out from in front of that other car. So there was no way to see it. The impact still severe enough to throw the child across the street. The child was rushed to St. John where he's expected to be okay. But as other officers tried to help out and this kid hit, they never made it. Instead, their car ended up like this, knocking over a utility pole as they careened out of control, making a turn on 27 Mile from Gratiot. Speed police say did contribute to this crash. Airbags deployed and both officers were injured. Both those officers have been transported to a nearby hospital. Uh, we are waiting on a condition of, uh, for the officers. And still in this 11 o'clock hour, no word on how those officers injured are doing, but you can see the airbags simply deployed. They were driving with such force that it caused the airbags to deploy. We are told that the boy who was 12 years old was last listed in temp serious condition at St. John. For now, reporting live on the city's east side with breaking news, Jermont Terry, Local 4. All right, your mom, it's so good to hear it's expected he's going to be okay. All right, warm weather on the way for the holiday weekend, but we, of course, also have a severe weather threat. Huh? Let's get right over to Ben. He's tracking the potential for some storms. Yeah, guys, even though it's a pretty slim window, it's really tomorrow afternoon we're focused on. This stuff tonight we are starting to watch. Obviously, there are two tornado watches you see. But there are no warnings. There are no storms that are actually severe right now. Uh, stuff just starting to get fired up here in the western portion of the state, west of Grand Rapids. Most of that is going to be in the northern sections of our area overnight. The question is, is will it be severe? The risk has actually been pared back, so we are no longer under that marginal risk for tonight. That ends pretty much at our viewing area, but we're still expecting thunderstorms and we're still expecting the potential of some hail. You can see the development of this 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. A lot of these storms are going to be from Lapeer, Sandalac, and St. Clair County, so basically north of 69, seeing a few more as we get towards 6 a.m. Then we shut everything down, and it comes back tomorrow afternoon, and those will be stronger. We'll talk about the risk here and look at the uh, timing on that coming up. Don't forget to take us with you as you go out and celebrate and remember this Memorial Day weekend and the local forecasters app. Everything you need to keep prepared from the weather is right there at your fingertips by searching WDIV in your app store. Guys? Okay, Ben. A DDOT bus driver is recovering tonight after being attacked by a passenger with a knife. It happened at Woodward and State Fair. Police say the two got into an argument, at a, and at some point, the 25-year-old passenger pulled out a knife and cut the driver. The passenger was arrested. No word yet on how the bus driver is doing. After decades of complaints about skyrocketing bills, the Michigan legislature has radically changed our auto insurance system in the state, promising relief from sky-high premiums and the ability to choose how much coverage you want. Let's get to Mara McDonald live downtown. Uh, such a rare thing, Mara, to see bipartisan support, and it was pretty, pretty overwhelming. It was, Devin, and even on a Friday, you know, the legislature isn't usually in session on Friday, and tonight the governor says she's signing this bill, so now what? 
pear cobbler sounds good. Uh, also an excellent choice. Blame it on the brisket, the pulled pork, or maybe the cobbler, but tonight... All right, one special, one cobbler, sixteen ninety six. I'm super hopeful. Like, when I saw everything coming out, like, on social media, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, please, please, <laughs> please. The mood at Rogue Estate Barbecue was hopeful that finally something has been done about our sky-high auto insurance premiums. If what they are promising comes to pass, it's going to make a big difference for my household. Bob insures all the family cars and the food truck. Survey says 954. The bills are astronomical. There you go, my man. Thank you. See you next time. I'm yeah. proud to vote yes to make auto insurance fair and affordable. With what the Michigan legislature passed in a surprising bipartisan move, you now have options for your car insurance. Instead of making everybody pay for lifetime medical called the PIP, or personal injury protection, you can now customize your coverage level and insurers are required to roll back your rates and hospitals can no longer charge whatever they want for services. The bills passed by major margins, although some Metro Detroit Democrats said no. It's a no hitter for Detroit. We have been sold out. Back here live now, other Detroit Democrats disagree with Representative Robinson and Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan says what was done today he thinks it's a win. Devin Kimberly, back to you. It's going to take a while, though, you have to imagine, to get this all up and running, Mar. It's not going to be as quick as uh, when the bill is signed by the governor. That's right. And I th well, here's the deal, Devin. You know, they signed this or passed this today with what's called immediate effect, which normally people would think, oh, okay, I can call tomorrow. No. Look for these rate rollbacks to come July of 2020. That's when you need to call your insurance agent and say, okay. Yeah. What, what can we do here? Yeah, a little over a Back year to ago then. All right, Mara. Uh, Mara mentioned the reaction from the mayor and from some Detroit Democrats. Also noteworthy the reaction from billionaire businessman Dan Gilbert because he recently launched a ballot initiative to get the law changed. Well, he's released a statement that reads in part, today is a monumental day in Michigan. The legislature and governor have worked together to reform auto insurance law in a bipartisan manner, a four-decade-long debacle that needlessly cost Michigan drivers billions and drove up our car insurance rates to the highest in America by a wide margin has finally come to an end. Michigan's Attorney General Dana Nessel says prosecutors are charging five Michigan priests with 21 sex crimes. The victims are between the ages of 5 and 26 years old. The priests were arrested yesterday in California, Arizona, Florida, and Oak Park. Three of them have ties to Metro Detroit. The Archdiocese of Detroit says priests were removed when the allegations were brought to their attention. Nessel, a Democrat, blasted Republicans for cutting funding for the investigation and putting more people at risk. I can't help but express my outrage at the fact that the legislature would think it's appropriate for sexual predators to remain on the loose and to create more victims in our state. The AG expects more charges to be filed as investigators continue to search through thousands of documents. Detroit businessman Robert Carmack is going to stand trial for allegedly selling property that he didn't own. Carmack made headlines, of course, recently for his public feud with Mayor Duggan. Prosecutors say Carmack fraudulently sold a piece of property in 2016 for a million dollars. He is charged with four felonies, and his trial is now set to begin this fall. Convicted murderer Bob Beshera is turning to the federal courts in his latest attempt to get out of prison. Beshera's attorney filed a 110-page petition today claiming he's being unlawfully detained. He argues his trial was tainted by ineffective counsel and by media coverage of the case. It was back in 2012, Beshera admitted to paying handyman Joe Gens to kill his wife, Jane Beshera. He was later convicted of her murder. He has exhausted all of his appeals at the state level. Churches are often the place people go to confess their sins, but over in Westland, it's the place someone chose to commit one. These are pictures from inside St. Mary Cause of our Joy Parish on Wayne Road. Church says someone used a rock to break in Wednesday through a ground level window. Two five foot statues were damaged and candles were broken, spewing wax all over the carpet. The altar, though, was not damaged. The church says the vandal was arrested. Still ahead, it's the viral video fast food giant does not want you to see. You may not want to see it either. <laughs> we'll see how the chain is reacting after a worker is caught on camera bathing in the kitchen. Sorry, man. 
Well, he apologized before taking off and nearly running over a police officer. See the moment officers eventually caught up with it. We're coming up first. It's a museum that pays tribute to a genre of music born right here in the city of Detroit. We're going to take you inside what many say is a hidden gem next in Uniquely Detroit.